everyone. You're listening to Tim McKinney from ITW Evercoat. Evercoat, the brand trusted by more shops for automotive and marine repairs than any others for almost 70 years. Bringing you continued innovations like Optex Filler with color changing technology and Optex Super Build with a built in guide coat. And now, here's Tim. So, hello everyone. This is Tim McKinney with Evercoat. Uh, I've got my friend on here, Jeremy Winters from Booth Talk. Uh, we've been working with a couple of different things. Jeremy's been using some of the products we got together last year for collaboration on his podcast, uh, Booth Talk. And since then, we've been kind of talking some more about the products, and we just wanted to have an opportunity for us to kind of talk about a few things that we thought might be helpful to some other techs. So with that being said, Jeremy, glad to have you aboard. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time for this, buddy. Dude, not a problem at all. Anytime. So, you know, the old question I keep getting, you know, urethane primers versus polyester primer. You know, I always give my scenarios. And uh, the scenario that I always give is uh, whenever I was using a product, and I try to not get into specific on the names here, but I was using a particular product in the shop back in, I'll date myself back in the 90s, and early 90s, late 80s, maybe, it it, kind of gets fuzzy for me. And this particular product was, uh, we called it in the shop, um, Gorilla Snot. And this stuff would hide everything, so they said. So Mm -hmm. we're putting it over 36 grit grind marks, 80 grit grind marks. I mean, it's sand that looked beautiful, but, you know, as you well know, you know, scenario like that, you know, do you see that stuff come back? What what do you think? (laughs) You already see me grinning and laughing here, don't you? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guarantee that it came back, that it came back. (laughs) And it did, especially with the darker color. Uh, Mm -hmm. So, you know, tell, tell me some of your scenarios, good or bad, with urethane primers before we get into polyester. Oh, God, dude. Uh, let's see. Piling it on too much. Uh, whenever I was a rookie getting into it, uh, not understanding the, <laughs> the proper flash times and what actually flash time was, and the importance of having a flash time. Uh, the measurement of using a heat lamp and putting the actual heat lamp onto the surface um, and actually thinking that if I get it closer, hey, it's going to cure a whole lot quicker. Funny thing about that, it, does, it doesn't work like that. Uh, <laughs> and same thing as you, you know, uh, going through and, oh, well, I'll just, I'll go in and I'll just knock this out with 36 and I'll just put a couple extra coats of primer on there. Uh, looking back as you learn as primer actually works, how it actually works and the bridging that happens and how everything is, the solvents are going to come out regardless how everything dries down. You're going to have that shrinkage. Eh, shrinkage ain't a great thing. And uh, it sucks when it's in body work. You've got a whole lot of time investment. Yeah. The, the last thing any of us want to do is that paint job where it's a buddy of a buddy or somebody you're trying to impress or you're laying down yep. some candy or some custom paint work. And then you're all done with it and you come back and you look at it and you're showing it to your friend and you look and all of a sudden those little pigtails start to show up or those straight line scratches where, you know, it was like, well, it yep. they weren't there when I painted it. What the heck? And, and I try to tell people that you can, you can probably sand it a buffet and get away for it just a little bit, but it's going to keep coming back. Yep. Yep. And that was our old adage. Well, let's see if we can color, you know, you know cut and rub color, sand and polish and get it to go away. Mm-hmm. And, it might for a little while, but then son of a gun, you'd, you'd get the phone call. Hey, they're, they're back again. You're like, how much clear did I put on the thing? How much, how much clear do I have to polish that stuff out for crying out loud? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So one of the benefits I try to bring up about a polyester primer is that by the time a polyester primer reaches its, its, its dry to sand stage, it's mm-hmm. done. It, it's not moving anymore. I mean, you've used some polyesters over the time. What do you think about that? I, I tend to go just to just to give myself a little bit of extra breathing room on stuff. Um, whenever I'm doing polyester, basically you're getting into the groundwork of everything. Um, and, you know, yes, once it's dry, once it's locked up, uh, anybody who's used it, you understand, you know, polyester is going to lock up. And once it's locked, you're good. I always try to give it a little little extra time sometimes that sucks for me on the other on the back side having to go through the one blocking um but just to be sure that everything is completely cured and completely locked down um because i guess it's just because of dealing with you know just normal primers that we had in the past 
you get on them too soon, it's the same thing. Those scratches, they're just not going to come back out. So make sure everything's cured out. Make sure everything's good to go. You're, you're not going to chance something down the road. So I tend to let it sit just a little bit longer, but just to play it safe on my end. Uh, my experience with polyester has been going back to the original slick sand, the original feather fill days uh, using the MBK hardeners. Now, I realize for some people who may be watching this, that wasn't that long ago. I, I get it. I understand. But I've been doing this now for 20 years and been in the industry professionally 17, 18 years, something like that now. And so yeah, that's really weird when you put that number on it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I joke and I say I get but, uh, for a reason. So I, I've been doing this for a while. So but, yeah, oh, there's they're starting to come in, brother. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, it's, it's those little tubes. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, I, I get a lot of question. Okay, I got this quart, I got this tube. How does it mix? And, well, and it, it used to be a wonderful thing because sometimes the that MEK harder would be dispersed. We'll just say elsewhere. Uh, by the local jobber store that you were using. And, oh, well, here, use these two big tubes. It's the same thing. Uh, <laughs> okay. But it's so much easier whenever you have four tubes. It's a gallon. Basic math. One per quart. Half per pint. Makes it easy. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, it's, it's – it's, it's, some people don't look at it that way. It's, uh, you know, here, just use these and then – you're getting into the whole fiberglass thing, counting drops, and trying to get everything else done. When the math is already done for you and a company's already gone through and done the work for you, why make it harder? Seriously, why make it harder on yourself? Yeah, yeah. So your experience with slick sand and feather fill G2. So have you, how much time have you spent sanding on those products? Tell me what you think and be brutally honest. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> I, I hated I hated having to go in because I mean it it built it built it did what it was designed to do but my God you got done you had bodybuilder arms brother I mean it, you, the, the original stuff especially if you got it in, got into it too hot that stuff started smoking in the gun and you're trying to get it all down there and it's locking up I mean it locks up quick at that point and then you know just going through trying to trying to get everything blocked out the early stuff but I mean it's it's like anything else over the years technology has advanced you know we're not having to work our tails off like we were years ago you yeah. know now things have come out they're, they're, there's quicker cure times they sand a lot easier than they used to i mean it's natural progression but back in the day i mean yeah, it was rough yeah <laughs> I, I i remember working with the original feather fill and then evercoat came out with feather fill g2 before i came to work for evercoat and mm -hmm. then like sand and I just remembered wow okay you know this the other the old feather fill was pretty much for fiberglass the feather fill G2, I can yep. use on some other things. And then slick sand, wow, the build I get with it. And then I come to Evercoat, still working with the products, still love them, still like them. I still They still have their place. And then recently we came out with some four-to-one polyesters. And the benefit that I think about that, well, I'll let you, what do you think of the four-to-ones? I mean, were they, was it easy to use, easy to mix? You tell me your opinion on that. It was it was a vast improver over the previous because now you're not having to keep, you know, you've got a big glass jar basically that's, that goes with it. Um, mixing ratio is obviously four to one. It's pretty much across the board. Every primer that anybody ever makes and uses is always four to one. Um, so the mixing ratio was a lot easier. Uh, being able to go in and get back into it, sanding the sandability of it, uh, that actually was a lot, of, uh, was improved a whole heck of a lot as well because of the fact, like I said, it's not like we were sitting here trying to sand concrete from previous generations. Now it's actually, you can knock it down, you know, with 180 and sit there, just keep working your block all the way through everything and just keep on rolling on the project. Yeah. And that, I got to agree with that 110% because one of the things that I loved about the products and I was very excited about them was now we have a polyester that can go direct to metal, that can go over top of, of steel. It can go over top of aluminum. We didn't need an etch primer. We didn't need an epoxy primer. Uh, we could get the film build we were looking for, like slick sand in the, you know, the days of old, uh, but it sanded so much better. And so when we came out with our first rendition of it, and then we evolved that up to super build like it is now. And then we came out with fiber fill and finish sand. Uh, you know, this this time of the year, I, I just had a conversation the other day about some shops that were doing hail damage. And bless their hearts, these poor fellows were making life so much harder for themselves. And said, man, why don't you just shine, sand the areas, sand the whole thing down 180, hit your spots where you got to put your mud work, 
do the mud work, sand that sucker flat, and then put two heavy coats of super build, block it, and you're done. And I can kind of hear this crickets in the background. They're like, you mean we don't have to grind? I'm like, why would you grind hail damage? You mean we don't have to sand everything with 80 grit? I'm like, why would you work that hard? And I said, you know, the yeah. benefit of a polyester primer is you sand that thing with 180, you blow your primer over top of it, you block it, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're good. Paint shop a whole heck of a lot faster. We don't get paid to stand yeah. out and look at the paint shop. We get paid to send things through the paint shop. Yeah. And, and the biggest thing, you know, one, one thing that I've come across just, just uh, over the past couple of years doing the podcast and whatnot has been discussions about, you know, different spray guns and stuff like that. And people, you know, they're trying to put a polyester primer through like a 1.7 or, or a 2.0. And you can get it through a 2.0. I'm, I'm not going to lie. You can get it through. But guys, they are companies that make you buy that are specifically for the, these polyester primers. And then when a trigger on clear coat, it does that with polyester. So I personally, I, I like my SADA guns. I like the SADA 100 BP. It's made directly for, you know, the polyester. So, you know, we're, we're talking about the, the products here. But guys, you got to be able to lay it down and lay it down slick, get it done right the first time. You don't want to fight it. It's like anything else. Spend the money, get the tool to help you do it right. Exactly. And I get that same question. Someone gets super build or someone gets uh, slick sand and they're trying to spray it. And they're saying, I, I'm just having all kinds of problems getting it to spray. You know, can I reduce it? And my first question is always, what gun are you using? I don't need to get specific, yeah. but what, what what's the tip size? Oh, I'm trying to spray it out of a, you know, I've had people say, I'm trying to spray it out of a one, four, one, six, my timeout. <laughs> Don't even put the gun down, put, put the, the gun, gun down, down. <laughs> just clear the gun, clean the gun and walk away. You've got to start with the one eight. And I like yeah. to get out of a two Oh or larger. Uh, yeah. I've used the same gun you just mentioned. Uh, I've used uh, their 1000 um, with the two five. I like the way that one sprays because if it's going, if you've got enough of an opening to get that material to spray out, you don't have to worry about reducing. It's going to flow and level itself out. Uh, and you're not going to get the level of orange peel. Now, if you've got to reduce yep. it and crank the air pressure up, it's probably not the right gun for you. Yeah. So I completely agree. So what other recommendations might you have for somebody listening to this that's never sprayed a polyester or they're thinking about it? I mean, if you were looking at uh, one of our four to one polyester primers versus a urethane, where would you use one versus another? Going through and using a polyester is going to be able to go through and help you level off all of the inconsistencies that you may have or you may not have. But it's going to take you just that one step further on everything and just make everything so much easier just to go through and level off. It's going to give you the build that you're not going to be able to get through a, a traditional urethane primer. Uh, yes, they mix the same. You know, a lot of times at four to one, uh, sometimes you can reduce your, uh, your urethane primers. Sometimes you have bench chemists that are going to reduce it, even though the people in lab coats, we have blue collars, uh, they say don't do it. They, other people say that you can. That's a whole nother subject, I understand. Um, but going through just, just doing the polyester, guys, like I said earlier, it's there are tools and products that are out you know, to, to help you do the job a whole lot simpler and a whole lot easier. Use them. Use them to your advantage. If you need to get that build, if you've got a slight wave or something like that, if you can get it out with just a coat of primer, Rather than sitting there and just keep working and working and working it, I'd rather go ahead and just get it primed out, be done, and move on. Yeah. One of the things I refer to a, a polyester, think of it like a spray filler. If you've got mm -hmm. one of those panels that you're looking at and going, you know what, I could really do just to wipe this whole thing up to try to you know get this, thing, this sucker nice and straight, is to just you know wipe it with glaze from start to finish. Um, mm -hmm. And in, you know instead of using a glaze to wipe the whole thing, I'd say, you know what? You'd be much better off. Put two good coats of a high build polyester primer on top of it and block that out. Now, um, I was trying to, to explain to a younger technician the other day that sometimes what happens is if you have, you know, a lot of dents, they don't look like they're very deep and they think, well, that's going to be easy to, to, to straighten out. And I said, well, if you imagine a, a rock or a pebble being dropped into water and you see that initial deep point where the pebble hits and the waves just start to go out, that, you know, metal can do that as well. So you may look like you're only taking care of the deep part of the dent, but the panel can still have some distortions in it. And what are your options? You know, wiping the whole thing with, with the glaze and then trying to block it straight. And I say, you know, that is where a high build, high solid polyester primer, especially our four to ones work beautiful because yeah. if you have any sand through and you got some bare metal showing, not to worry. It's direct to metal. You, it, you're covered. You don't need to spray uh -huh. stuff. You don't need to spray epoxy. 
um, put the product down, put enough down there to block with, block it straight, you know, take it out to a fine enough grit and send it to paint. And I, I get the question asked, you know, can you spray color over top of a high build, high solid polyester primer? If it's been sanded down to the right sand scratch for your paint company, you know, can I put the color directly over top of it? So I've got my response, but I, I wanted to hear your take on that. What, what do you think for scenario like that? If, if you're getting ready to finish out the, the polyester, me personally, I like going over and just putting a sealer on it uh, just to play it safe. Uh, that's just the way I was trained. It's the way I was, you know, from it was pounded in my head. Uh, you know, and this goes back to the old MBK days that we were talking about earlier. Um, just being able to go over it with a 2K uh, primer, uh, primer sealer, rather, a 2K product. That way, you know, you've got everything locked down. You've got a full uniform subs, uh substance to go off the top of and, and i'm sitting here stumbling over words i'm sorry <laughs> 2k product there that you can go on top of your surface with and you've got full complete uh coverage with everything you've got a uniform uh color up underneath no matter what color it is you're not gonna have to work i remember with the old uh mek ones you know it was always recommended to go back over with 2k and don't just go right over the top of it because a lot of the times you had those sand scratches you might have those stray scratches from blocking or heavy DA work or what, whatever it may be. Um, but that's, that's the way I do it. Um, anytime I do any type of heavy priming, if I'm going to go back, if I can finish down in the polyester, it's absolutely awesome. I'll finish it out up to about 320, 400. I'll put a sealer on it, roll it. That way, basically I'm locking everything down. I know it's good and I can continue on. Exactly. And, and exactly that point. So I've had people say, well, can I put down a sealer? And I go, listen, if your paint company says to put the sealer down in order to stay within their warranty, do it. If you're spraying a metallic, it's a, it's a color that's a pain in the butt, like <coughs> champagne, silver. <coughs> yes. Put yeah. down a sealer. If you're doing a spot repair, put down a sealer. But, you know, I've got some guys that use this for truck and fleet applications and they're spraying some, you know, acrylic enamels and, and enamels like that. And I go, listen, yep. you're doing a whole panel and you take it out to the recommendation of that particular paint company. And they say, take it out to 400 grit and then spray, spray a, a solid color single stage over top of it. You're going to be OK. But if they're they're wanting you to put yeah. a sealer down, then put a sealer down. You know, it's yeah. if I've if I've already got it masked up, it's in the booth. I want to put color over top of it. I just mix up a little sealer, go in there, and, and it's insurance. And then I come back out and I get yeah. color and then I let it go. See, and this is this is where it all gets into, you know, people trying to, oh, well, I'm just going to do it like this because I know it works. Well, it, it may work. Pay attention to what the TDS says for each paint company. Every paint company is different. You know, and fleet work is completely different from regular collision work and, you know, doing stuff out of your garage and whatnot. Pay attention to what the what your TDS is saying and what you can and cannot get away with. They're written there by people who have much higher pay grade than I do. Just just follow by what they say. It's it's simple. Yeah. And you know what? You just hit another good, excellent point for this conversation is follow the technical data sheet, not just for what you're doing now, but for what you put on before and what's going after it. Because I'll get a question, well, can your product go over substrate X or primer X? And I might say, well, generally it can, but you know, you need to look at that one because I have seen coatings that will say, do not coat with the polyester, bam, exclamation. Yep. And they want to know if they can put mine over top of it. And I go, I'm not going to cover that because these guys are saying not to. And then you follow it on the, the backside of it. And they'll say, well, can I just go ahead and put my uh, three stage candy color directly over top of, of your polyester primer? And I'm going, I, I wouldn't do that. I'd put a sealer on it. Again, follow yep. the recommendation. Everyone says I'm a little OCD about this, but what I like to do before I spray anything, I don't always work on the, you know, assumption that I know how to do anything because, you know, we've heard the rules of assumption and things that can happen. So oh, yeah. I have. The well, you know what happens when you assume. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like to know that I've got to take that sheet for everything I'm working on to make sure I'm doing the right thing, the right mix, the right catalyst. Um, yep. and, and kind of speaking to that point, I'll, I'll come back to about the tech data sheets. Um, having good, fresh catalyst. By golly, you know, just because you've got a product sitting on the shelf you've been using reliably, reliably for the past three years doesn't mean that that little can or whatever you're using, especially, especially 
if it's a urethane catalyst that contains isocyanates, that it's still going to work every day for you because, you know, catalysts can go bad. I've seen you mean you mean once once stuff's open and unsealed, air gets in it and it messes with it. I know who who'd have thought who'd have, it's who would have thought that mind blowing epic stuff here. Yes, so you know, I've had this thing for ten years. What do you mean I can't use it? <laughs> I've had this conversation. Uh, had a guy spray. That's the sad part. <laughs> I had a scenario where a gentleman used a pre coat with the catalyst that swore to me that the product was good for seven years. And he thought that the catalyst after he's been opening it and closing it was good for seven years. I, I want him to get into all the things that happened with it. And when I went back to talk to his jobber, he's like, well, that's the original one he bought seven years ago. And I said, he's still spraying it. And he goes in this neck of the woods where he was, it was very, very hot and humid. And he said, that product is good at best for three months. And he said, oh, my goodness, for any of the uh, the urethane catalysts that contain isocyanates, he said, we tell somebody down here, if you ain't done with it in two weeks, start over, get another one. So, yeah, always having good, fresh catalyst, and especially for the body filler. We talked about that. Oh, yeah. This, that's another good point we can talk about later. But <laughs> having the tech data sheets available and reading through them to make sure all the materials are compatible that before I sand my, my, my polyester primer with grit X, okay, does the next coating correlate with that? I don't want it to be too big of a gap. You know, sanding a polyester primer with 80 grit, then rolling it in a booth and putting sealer over top of it, probably isn't going to work out too well with, with you. Probably not. No. You know, and, and, that's, and, and that's, that's where it comes into, you know, there's, there's a reason that things say to sand a product up to – whatever grid it is we'll just you know you said 80 uh you know step it up to you know people want things finished out in a certain grid or applying to the next step that they're talking about what it is there's a reason for that you know even even getting into into uh talk about the differences in polyesters and, and urethanes and whatnot you know just just to backtrack a little bit the reason that we don't go through and prime over 36, you know, just for a great example of it, you know, people think, oh, well, you just throw a couple extra coats on there and it'll be fine. Well, the difference is going into the urethane primers and such, guys, is if, if you're looking at this on the video part, uh, if you're listening to it on the audio, just hold your hand up in front of you. And just imagine every one of those V's in between your fingers there is a 36 grit stretch. Now, whenever you come across that, you're putting a coat of uh, urethane primer on there. It's going to fill it up, right? Oh, well, I can just I can just drop the pressure or really hammer it on. Okay, cool. That's awesome. You're shoving primer down into all. That's great. What happens when that solvent comes out? What happens whenever? Because we all know solvent's going to come out some way, one way or the other. We've all dealt with the, the you know the 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 DLAM issues later on down the road from people over applying, uh, you know, getting on top of their solvent base coat too soon with clear you know what happens also you smell those solvents coming up when, during the d lamp but all of a sudden you block that down you say oh well that's that's still great it's not filling in those scratches you've got such a big amount of area there that's trying to fill in so by the time you cut it down you may you may cut it down you know about to that first that first joint right there but those are still there and as soon as those solvents come out of it guess what it's going to bring all of that all that top work right back down you're going to have all those all that shrinkage coming on you're going to have everything exposed and guess what you just spent all that money top coating a black paint job and now you've got all of those straight line scratches through it there's a reason that the tds are there you don't do things and just cowboy up and count there's a reason that there's a process it's just it's, it's so much easier to in these days in this day and age to, to blame a product rather than saying you know what i messed up i didn't reap on what it was supposed to do and I, and I think I wish there would be more of that, of just saying, hey, I messed up. I didn't read. But there's a reason for stuff, guys. And, and taking a few minutes and, being edu and educate yourself on a product and why it does what it does, the right way to do things, it, it will save you so much time and effort and redo. That's yeah. the biggest thing. It will save you a lot of redos and headaches. But you know, everybody loves redoing the work twice, you know, not getting. Oh, yeah. I lived for that. No, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the solvent part, that, that just that blew my mind. There's solvents in these things. And we've mm -hmm. got to wait for, what's that word we were talking about before? Flash time. 
but, flash. Solid but, evacuation is a hell of a thing. <laughs> but if I just put a heat lamp on it so it just barely starts to smoke and back it off, I should be good by doing that, right? Yeah. yeah it, it's, it's amazing whenever people do that because and, – and, hey, guys, I am nowhere near throwing stones here. I'm that guy. That was me whenever I got going. We, Like I said, we, we all want to go and do that and get the job done quick. Well done. Every single person that hears this can honestly probably raise their hand and say, you know what, yeah, yeah I've done that. Okay. You know, it, it's – if you're capping it off, that's all you're doing on the surface when, when you're getting just a traditional heat lamp. You know, because not so many people have some of these, uh, some of these IR heat lamps that will – you know, the short waves and whatnot, medium waves, you know, all these that are d- designed – to drive the primer from inside out, a lot of us just have the older stuff where it's just going to slide up to it, and then you're cap, uh, you're going to cap off the top of it. Great. Now you've got a hardened surface on the outside, solvents on the inside. They're going to come out. <laughs> you know, I worked with years back. I had an old painter I worked with, and his idea to speed things up. Now imagine this: is he'd have a blowgun in his pocket. And he'd spray something, he'd take the blowgun, he'd blow over the surface, and it would you'd actually watch it start to skin. Yep. And then he'd put the IR on it, and you could see the solvents, you know, b- busting out of this thing. And every now and then he'd have someone that would come back, you know, if he painted a dark color and it would just lose its gloss and he'd scratch his head. And knowing what I know now, I'm like, man, all those solvents were fighting each other in there. And that's why you know the, the the urethanes allowing the solvents you know they have their place but i always say urethane mm-hmm. primers are not filler if you need yeah. something to spray that is more like a filler that's where polyester comes into play and that's where you know yes. i have really been adapting to and i love super build uh anything i do nowadays it's either super build or finish sand but i, I kind of want to talk about it, one of our newer products that i think you've used that that new one that you know the the Pepto Bismol colored ones. You know, the- ah yes 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 yes. I I sprayed a lot of that. Uh, I think it, uh, uh, yeah over a god what was it over a it was about a six week stretch. I had to strip bodywork and prime uh, completely get everything finished out door jams everything uh, a fifty three Willis wagon. Uh, this is going to be uh, Project Battle Wagon. If you guys want to look it up on Instagram or Facebook, it's for Ian Johnson uh, for Big Tar Garage. And I had I had a very tight deadline uh, for filming on that thing, and that thing got coated in polyester. It it had I think it was three passes of uh, three passes of polyester once I got all my body work done, and that was that that was a huge thing. Good lord! But yeah, let's let's talk about the actual primer itself, man. Because because uh, I've used I've used pretty much every generation of the polyester uh, like like we said you know at the very beginning you know from the uh, slick sand and feather fills the G twos and you know the, when the four to ones came around you know I was using those and then I use summer before last was actually my first time trying out four to one super build the original and I've still actually got it that what's left of that can over there I did a drag car a a fiberglass not only a drag car but a jet car a fiberglass jet car. Cool. Um, yeah, not fun. The, the, I, I had to rebuild the entire front end in fiberglass. So you guys got some stock money from me. Uh, <laughs> when I say I had to rebuild the entire front end of that jet car, brother, I am not lying. Um, but I got turned on to the super build cause I never used it before. Um, I got turned on to it from Randy Borcharding from paint house, Texas. And, uh, he told me about, it. he said, that's what he uses on all of his fiberglass stuff. He said, I'm telling you, try it. You're going to love it. He said, you can do, use it over other stuff, but I mainly use it on fiber mess. Okay. Well, if it's good enough for Randy, my God, it's going to be fine for me. I tried it. I loved it. Ironically, that was the same thing, uh, same time that I got that 2.5 gun, sprayed it, laid down awesome, locked down. I was like, okay, this is, this is, this is really nice. So hearing whenever I got going on this, um, that, that you guys had come out with a built-in guide coat for Super Build. And this is how the whole thing, you know, I, I think it was a couple of years ago, green means go uh, for the filler. And now you have the uh, uh, pink is the new black, you know, pink is your guide coat. I was, okay, well, let's, let's try it out and be able to spray it and go through and block it. 
that that it, to go back over, take an extra step, doing the guide code. I understand some people are going to hear this. Well, why do you need to? Why do you need a primer that has guide code in it? You you can just put on a guide code. Okay, well, I you know we don't have to wear shoes, but we do anyway. So hey, yeah. So it's you know it, it's just so much easier. Just go in and just start going in onto your process. You know, starting to block everything down, get everything where you need it to be. You know, it literally it turns it turns great. You're you're seeing your finished pro, uh, finished product as it always is, anyways. All the thing is that it's pink. So it was a funny trick though. Whenever I told uh, whenever I was doing updates for Ian, because I told him I was getting ready to record some stuff and I was going to put it in, into the first round of uh, primer. So if you go back on my Instagram and uh, also on Facebook, I put in, uh, I did a little short video. I was like, man, we're, I said, I'll hold the phone up and you can see the way I'm in. Now we're going, now we're going to go ahead and get ready to get this thing into primer. Uh, by the way, I think, I think we're going to make it pink. Yeah. We're going to put Ian's manly four by four wagon. We're going to put that in pink primer. Tune in next. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all he had. So Ian, spiky hair off-road you know builds these awesome badass you know off-road rigs and he's getting pictures of a pepto bismol his pink wagon i can only imagine <laughs> <laughs> you know my wife says why is it you guys always bust each other's chops i go listen we 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 bust each other's chops because we like each other it's the guy mm -hmm. in the shop that nobody talks to he's the one nobody likes but why yeah can we like to and i'd have done the same thing to one of my buddies i would have said you know what i ran out of the other color but i got plenty of this pink behind me i'm gonna go with it brother you're gonna like this when this is done so that's funny mm -hmm. the pink it, it, it's all about having fun with things exactly exactly so the the pink guide coat that's on the surface you know i kind of want to reiterate to this and whoever's listening to this it is a sacrificial guide coat it's on the surface meant to be sanded off so when you're using that product you know it i say it sprays pink it stays pink but what you want to do is sand the pink off you got to make sure you're sanding the pink off because there you go i like it i like it so when you spray the the, the product that pink is meant to be sanded off to tell you where the high and low spots are and people have called me up and said well i got some spots that you know there's still some pink in there can i paint it white and i go no would you have used the other company's black charcoal material all over the panel sanded it down had some low spots with some black in it and go you know what i think i'm gonna paint that white now no you, you, you oh. get that stuff out it, it's no different once you get into the black process of any other primer all it is is just it's an extremely high build primer that's the biggest thing it's there to give you the build. It's there to give you the leveling. It's there to give you what you need to make everything else uniform. Other than that, you're sanding it, doing the steps just like you would any other primer, you know, blocking it out, working it up the grits. If you're seeing the paint, that's great. That means you know you have a spot you need to fix. <laughs> and, and just to kind of follow up with that, what I've told people to do, if you've got a spot you need to fix, you see that, wow, I've sanded it. I started off with 180. I went to 220. I went to 320. I got the 400. Son of a gun. I still got some pink in there. Well, okay. That may let you know that that may have been an area you should have probably addressed before you squeezed the trigger on the gun. But now that we've got this, okay, you're going to prepare your surface before you apply a product like Rage Ultra uh, or pro apply a product like Rage Optics or one of our putties. Okay, we're going to say that's got to be sanded with at least 180 grit. So guess what? Buzz that area down with a little bit of 180. You don't, we're mm -hmm. not looking to take it all off. Put your product on, block it, block it straight. And then at that point, okay, you can reprime it with the polyester or depending on what you're using, maybe you're going to go with the urethane primer. Mm -hmm. I like to you do all my blocking on polyester and then come mm -hmm. back with one or two light coats of a urethane just to make sure it's all nice and smooth because urethane primers, like we said, are not fillers. But right. they do lend themselves very well to blocking out with finer grits. I mean, yes, I, I know that you know, if I'm going to wet sand a, a whole car or sand a whole car, I don't do a whole lot of wet sanding anymore. Um, I don't, I don't see a whole lot of wet sanding. That, that you, you really don't. You really don't. The, the only type wet that you see anymore is people go, just going through and doing the scuffing process. You know, and, and 
and even that you're seeing more of the, the like the scuffing agents that people that the companies are coming out with. Um, you know, I know Speed Hacker, you know, scuff stuff, you know, a number of the others, you know, you don't see many people out there anymore with the, uh, with the red or gray and then throwing the comment in there and then, you know, rubbing that onto the family. You don't see that much anymore. Everybody's mm-hmm. using the scuffing face. Yeah. And, and, you know, to kind of that point, you know, with the wet sanding, uh, you know, as far as polyesters, I'm not an advocate of, of wet sanding, you know, it, for a lot of cases, because we're talking about making sure all the solvents are out. Well, trapped moisture inside of a film can be just as bad. It can be just as big of a pain, uh, you know, like for you paint that white car where you wet sanded the, the urethane that maybe you didn't put enough pre-coat on it. And now you're looking, you got this little brown spot showing up in the clear and you wonder what's going on with that. So you know, I, I try to say, you know, avoid the extra solvents and avoid the extra moisture. So I'm not a fan of wet sanding polyester primers. And I'll say, hey, would you wet sand your body filler? And guys will usually go, well, no. Okay. Well, it's a polyester, right? Well, yeah. So why wouldn't you wet sand your polyester filler? Well, because it'll absorb moisture. Okay, now we're talking about something. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's still polyester. Why? Well, it's a primer. No, it's still polyester. It didn't change chemistries. Mm-hmm. But you know, if I block down my my ear my polyester and I put my urethane over top of it, you know, a couple light scuffs, and then I'm going to take it in the booth, and I may just spray color of my urethane primer. But depends. I'm, I may still put a sealer over top of it. Uh, but if I take it out fine enough. I may just blow the sealer on it and continue on with the color. So, you know, yep. making sure that you don't, and I guess that's the other thing I want to talk about is not trapping those solvents in. Um, and, you know, as far as, you know, wiping the panel, you know, I try to tell everyone all, all the time, you know, sometimes working with polyesters, the best thing to clean off the sanding dust for a polyester, good old clean compressed air um, or using something that flashes yeah. quickly. Uh, mm-hmm. I've seen scenarios where it's bare, body filler and i've just had the discussion about not putting water over top of body filler and i look over there and there's a guy you know got that can of wax and grease remover and it's dripping out of the rag and he goes over and he starts wiping off the body filler and and i'm kind of cringing a little bit i'm like you know you gotta get that off of there and they're like no no it'll flash off i'm like no no wax wax and grease removers testify they don't they they're meant to <clears throat> there's of a, a slick surface not a pore yeah th- there's a trick that i learned actually from kevin uh from kevin tates uh you guys he's he's uh he hosts a show now called hands on cars he's been on he's been doing tv work for 20 years guys a great friend great mentor of mine um i am the same guy that you are of throw the door open get the blower um Kevin is a very much, <laughs> he's very much a clean, uh, clean freak. He wants things clean. He wants things orderly. He wants everything put up in its place. Uh, Kevin will go through and vacuum stuff, but he showed me, you know, the reason that he does it is because if he has any pinholes or anything like that, for one, he's not blowing dust all over his shop. Now his shop, he keeps, uh, he keeps clean because obviously he's doing filming out there. He's got students, he's got, you know, all sorts of different stuff that goes on out there. And that's less he's got to do later. So by using the vacuum, A, it's keeping it clean. Second is that he's actually pulling out anything that's jumped up, uh, you know, clogging up any of the any pinholes or anything like that. So he can instantly see anything that needs attention or anything like that. It was, uh, you know, I, I, it was one of those things that I learned, you know, whenever I was out here doing the wagon you know, on the backside of my shop here, you know, I've got, you know, my, my shop is split in half. So I've only got about half the work area that, you know, really I should, I should open up the other side. But whenever I had the wagon, if you go back and watch episode 11 of uh, a big tire garage, this season, season two, I think is what it is for the, for the Willis wagon build is that during body work, if you watch that episode, my shop is trashed with <laughs> on the backside. There's dust everywhere all over this place. And I learned that trick in the middle of doing that. And I was like, you know what? That would have been nice about two weeks ago. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But, but it, may, it made perfect sense because, you know, all of that, you know, I could have just gone through and just been cleaning up as I was doing, you know, been thinking, hey, I could do this all as I go. But no, I was, I was the guy with the blower, you know, I, I cleaned everything out in one hit. You know, it's a little, little bit, you know, just it's some of those things that some people have, you know, and, and that's what I love about the industry is that everybody has a different way of doing things. There's, there's on some things, there's not a right way and a wrong way. You can, you can adjust, you can try this way and that way. Some things allow you to do that. And these guys who have been doing it for a number of years, you, you can learn stuff from them. 
to this day, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and, you know, to that point, I did a presentation for a shop uh, about one of our newer products and the guy that was in the shop, everyone just called him grandpa. And I walked right. to him and I was talking to him. I said, you know, listen, I said, when I'm doing this presentation, I said, you know, ask me some questions. It's because the younger guys in the shops aren't, you know, they don't typically want to ask. No one wants to be that guy, you know? Mm-hmm. And so he starts to ask me some questions and he was trying to, he was throwing me on some curveballs. He's trying to trick me. And uh, I loved it because I, you know, we're, we're engaging, we're having a good dialogue. And now that the younger techs are starting to ask some questions. And so left the product in there for a while. I came back and I think I came back like two months later and I walked up to him and I used his real name and he just lit up a cigarette. So you can call me grandpa. And I was like, no, no, I'll, I'll use your real name. I respect you, sir. And I said, what do you think of my product? And he just takes a big drag and blows it out. He goes, I wish you invented that crap about 20 years ago. I'd make my life a whole lot easier. <laughs> and I thought this is just epic because, you know, we all can learn something from this. And as you were saying, technology changes, you know, yep. Everco, we're trying to make our products work harder. So the technicians don't have to. And so that they do, they do more with less time, with less grits you know, to, to say you could say in a polyester primer starting with 180 grit, you know, with some of the old polyester primers, you know, I'd have been laughed at in the shop. Exactly. You started at 80 to see if it would cut. Yeah. That, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. And, and so you, 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 the new technologies that are coming out, you have to be willing to adjust and adapt to them. Yeah. And that vacuum trick, I like that. You know what, by golly, next time I do some work, I'm going to incorporate that. One of the things I was always taught was doing the old blow gun, you know, and yep. it may, may not have been the right blow gun because it may have involved plumbing fittings that went together, just went in. We'll just leave it at that. I have no clue as to what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so you, you know, go over to the regulator and crank that puppy up and you'd start blowing off your body work and you'd, you'd see the pinholes, but sometimes yep. you didn't. And I had an old technician tell me, he said, you know what, you'd be better off. He said, work smarter, not harder. I thought, what are you talking about? So he taught me, crank the air pressure down and take a good, dry, clean rag that's got nothing else on it and blow right in front of the rag and use that to kind of agitate, kind of like the bristles, what Kevin was doing while he was vacuuming. Yep. And all of a sudden, pinholes that I didn't know were there. I'm like, how did those get there? But it was just the difference in learning something new that helped me mm-hmm. to find these pinholes. And, you know, now those are some of the techniques I bring up in some of the presentation I do. And I, and I talk to our field guys about doing these things as well. So, but, yep. but um, yeah, so great news to hear about the, the urethane primer. We've, we've went a lot longer than uh, versus polyester primer. We went a lot, a lot longer than I wanted to. But I, I oh, brother, I'm just uh, getting going. We we haven't even talked about fillers. Let me get going on that optics filler. Green means go, brother. That stuff's life changing. We got to keep going here. You know what? <laughs> I think that's a perfect time for us to end, and we'll come back for another podcast. So everyone, stay tuned for the next podcast we'll be coming out with between Jeremy and myself, and we're going to talk about the optics primer. So, brother, thank you so much for your time tonight. Really do appreciate it. Not a problem at all, guys. Everybody, take care.